Yeah, good afternoon, guys. Um, uh, I know it's been announced now, but I've, I'm really excited to uh, to have these two gentlemen alongside. I know we're on Zoom now, so you can't actually see anyone. <laughs> I've got uh, two assistant managers. Have obviously, um, I've been working. We've, you know, we've been working hard to to get in. We've had the first day with the players today. We've got Richie Kyle and we've got Paul Trollope. Richie, I've obviously worked with before at Forest Green and, and at Watford, known for a long, long time. From uh, from 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 you know a decade ago now, from when uh, Richie was working at Blackpool when I retired, and um, and then from our time at the FA as well, uh, he's a you know a lifelong coach, been coaching for 20 years now. I'm really excited to be working again with with Richie, and then Paul on on my right here, who um, we've actually known go even further back from there, fairly early on in my career. From, from um, a few Wales camps together, and then we've we've, we've sort of more recently uh, linked up again. And he's someone that I've got a lot of time for and respect for. He's had a, a fantastic career, and um, as a player, as a manager, and as a coach. And we're you know we're really lucky to have him and his expertise alongside us. So I'm really happy with the team that we've got to add to what is already a fantastic team here of of, of, of staff and people. So. Um, yeah, really pleased to have Richie and Paul here with um, with me, uh, and I'll sort of open it up to you guys to to maybe you know ask them a few questions rather than me. It's quite nice. I'll sit back for a bit. Is it you first, Jeff? Yeah, I'll start with Richie. So if you want to switch, there we go. Hi, Richie. How are you? Uh, I'm very well. You? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Um, so you've joined up with Rob again. You obviously know him well. Um, what, what do you make of Luton Town as a football club? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an exciting one. Uh, I can see the, the progression over the over the past few years. Obviously, in my, my own coaching career, I've come across them a few times um, in League Two. Uh, so you can see how quickly the club has gone and grown. And it's always been, a, for me, even growing up, I always thought Luton was a big club growing up um, from where I'm from. Um, so. It's, it's a really exciting time to be here and I think moving forward um, I think we can achieve success here and I'm really looking forward to getting started. You obviously work with, with Rob uh, at Watford so you, you've kind of got a little bit of knowledge about the championship but you'll be looking forward to, to get involved in, uh, in, the, in the championship once again. Yeah definitely I mean it, you know the time we had in the championship it was uh, it was it's a competitive league, we all know that. There's uh, lots of quality teams and quality players and you know you want to test yourself uh, at this level and higher and um, I'm really fortunate enough to get an opportunity to get back in and, and you know, be up against some of the, the, the biggest clubs in the league and I feel that you know, after watching and researching a lot of the Luton games over the past couple of weeks, it's, um, I think it's a real good opportunity for us and the club to really kick on now and, and have a really strong finish to the season. Just give us an idea of what the coaching will be like, Richie, as far as you, what you'll do and what Rob will do and what Paul will do. How does that, how do you bounce off each other? Yeah, I think it's a good question because we're, we're all we're all we're all coaches. We all love to, to be on the grass. We all love to deliver, and I think that's the that's the beauty of it is that we all do like to, to help the players and and be delivering on the grass. And we've all got different expertise. Rob's different to me. Charles is different to the two of us. So. You know, we, we, we will all be doing our bit, I suppose, and, and you know, when it comes to the games, obviously Rob has the, the final say on what that looks like near the end of the week. But I think, you know, we, we've got a real passion for coaching all of us and we want to help the players improve, more importantly, the team collectively and individually. So I think the players will get a lot of different voices, which is great. Uh, and as I say, between the three of us, it's, it's exciting to, to, to work together and bounce off each other. How excited are you to uh, to work with these Luton Town players who uh, are, are a likeable bunch just because of the amount of work and the, the shifts that they put in? Yeah, like, like I said before, you know I've watched a lot of games now and I've, I've um, obviously I know some of the players we've got that, that have come across and you know you can see straight away even walking in the building this morning for the first time you can feel the atmosphere you can feel the the camaraderie with the players and. You know, even doing the session this morning, you know, it was only an, an hour session, but their, their energy, their enthusiasm, the willingness to learn, the willingness to listen, um, it, it all bodes well to, for, for me as a coach, it's great to come into this environment where the, the, the players love being here and you can feel that already. And just a final one from me to you before 
uh, which chat to Paul. Just give us an idea of what the man alongside you is like, Rob, because like, we've obviously spoken to him, but you know him better than all of us. Can he go up the room first? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Rob, 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 as I say, I've worked with um, Rob over the, the, the last couple of appointments that we've had, and I've, I've known Rob for a long time, especially from a Blackpool days when we first connected, and first and foremost, and I, I'm sure he won't mind me saying it, I think he's one of the brightest young managers in the game coming through now um, on the grass, one of the best coaches I've seen work, um, he's a people's person, he likes to engage with players, he likes one-to-ones, and he, you know, his detail in his coaching and his detail and his passion for for, for football is is incredible and you know it's, I, I think I'm really privileged to work from him and with, with, with him and I've learned so much as well and I think we're only going to get stronger uh, and better with the experiences we've had. Hey then Paul, you okay? Hi Jeff, yeah good thanks, good. Good stuff. Um, Paul, you're, I mean, you're a, you're a football man, you're vastly experienced as a player, as a coach, as a manager. Uh, you'll know what Luton Town are like. How, how excited are you about this opportunity? Yeah, really excited with the, with the challenge ahead. I think the, obviously it's been well documented and you guys know more than, than anyone the, the success the club's had over a relatively short period of time, probably similar to Richie, I remember back in the sort of 2007, 8, 9, being in the same league when I was, when I was at, at, at Bristol Rovers as manager and you know, always had you know, a real respect for the football club. It's obviously got top level uh, pedigree as well in, in the past and some fantastic players have been, have been through here. So I think we're aware of the, the club's uh, DNA, its history and you know, we're trying to, trying to write one, one of our own now. You know, they have done really well um, over the, a really short period of time and there's been a lot of successful things that have, that have taken place here and I think we come in with a lot of respect for that um, but also with a with a hunger and a desire and an ambition to to move it forward as well and progress we're here we're here to, to succeed we're here to win games and we're here to build on the good work that the staff and, and the players have obviously done here. You've teamed up with Chris Hewton in the past quite a lot, so you've, you've kind of moved away from there. What's the, what's the thinking behind that? He's, I think he's with in the World Cup at the moment, isn't he? He is. He's out. I think they they kick off very shortly against Portugal with with Ghana. Um, I've you know got a really good relationship with Chris. I've been at a number of clubs uh, with him, and you know we've uh, we've had some successes. You know, some maybe things that haven't quite gone how we'd how we'd like. But um, no, I've, I've had a, a fantastic journey with Chris, and you know, he's a he's a fantastic football man, very good manager, very good coach, and most importantly, he's a, he's a fantastic human being. And uh, you know, I speak speak to Chris regularly. Um, but listen, when when you're, you're between jobs, whether you're a manager, whether you're a coach, you look at opportunities as they as they come along. And reconnected with Rob again recently, as as he as he uh, as he detailed there. And you know, as soon as he said there was a possibility of, of working together, it's something that you know I was very excited about. So I'm delighted to join join um, Rob and, and Richie. We know you know they've they've done you know, a fantastic job at Forest Green Rovers. Probably didn't get the time. Um, that they were were due a club down the road, so um, you know hopefully you know I can add to to the staff you know um, add a bit of value maybe bring something a little bit different to to help us succeed. And in the last few years, you've experienced the championship a lot, so you know you know the league very well. Yeah, I do. Yeah, um, you know it's um, uh, a, a few uh, different experiences. I have to say at. Uh, my last sort of three jobs at Cardiff, uh, Brighton, um, and at Nottingham Forest, um, and the league never changes. You know, it's some years it's a wee bit stronger than other years, but it's competitive. Anyone can beat anyone on their day, and you've got to be right at it every every single week. But you know, listen, it's like I said, we I'll reiterate it. You know, we are you know we're here to to progress the club, push it forward, and we'll be doing everything we can to be really competitive in the league. You know, give the players. Uh, a, a, a game model that's you know Rob Rob's game model that you know we want to we want to put in place, and we feel like there's a good you know a, a good base a good basis here to work from and hopefully improve. When you've come up against Luton in the last few years in the Championship, what's your idea been of them as a team and as a club? A really effective team. You know, I think they've been really good in both boxes. I think they've been they play to the strength of the players, which is always, you know, the the right thing to do for any manager who, who's in place. 
and I don't think anyone can argue over the last four or five years what, what's happened at the football club apart from it's been, a, it's been an amazing journey for people involved, for the players, for the staff and management uh, and obviously the fans it must have been a, an incredible journey um, and you know I think we came as a, as a staff you know with probably a few points to prove hungry for success, hungry to work hard, hungry to give everything for the football club and do everything we can to win you played with Rob for Wales. Have you t- kept in touch ever since then, or what's the relationship been like since um, then? Yeah, I, I was right at the end of my career at Wales. I'd like to put that, <laughs> and Rob was just starting. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and listen, we we obviously were in a few squads together, I, I believe, um, under Mark Hughes many many years ago, um, which was for me a great experience. And then we've we've crossed paths over the years when Rob was at Wolves in different coaching roles and I was at different clubs so you know we've always um, sort of spoken when we've seen each other but it's, it's not been a close friendship um, but you know we, we've, we've reconnected and you know, as soon as we you have discussions with people and you realise you share values probably share some philosophies of the, the, the way the game you think the game would like to be you'd like to play the game so um, I was pleased to reconnect and obviously delighted to be to be asked to come here to work with him I'm trying to think if you've worked with any of the players at Luton in any of the other jobs. Was Lansbury at Forest? Any of the no, others? I, I, there's a few I've no. worked with. Um, Carlton Morris was a kid at Norwich when I was there. They won the FA Youth Cup. Amari Bell was at Birmingham. Um, Luke Freeman was at Forest with us uh, recently, and I had a very, very young Matt Macy at Bristol Rovers many years ago. So yeah, there's a few, there's a few I, I know, which is you know, which is nice to to see some of the the, the young boys that were, they were at the time progress and being you know being a being a, a, a in a championship squad and playing the championship is great for them. It shows it's testament to their their desire and their progress because I think probably looking at all of them, they all maybe dipped from the club they were at and had to take a step back to move forward, but. I think it's like a lot of the players here. You can see the ambition, you can see the hunger, and they're a young set of players that you know show a lot of energy and drive and ambition in their in their play. So hopefully we can continue that and add to that. You know. Yeah, and for all three of you, Paul, it must be nice that you've got this little bit of time to work with the players, which doesn't normally happen, does it? Midway through a season, before that first game, with when the three of you are, in, are, are there for that first one. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be it'll be crucial to us. You know, I think coming in. Uh, coming into a, a new program, if you like, in the summer gives you the pre-season to work on. Most of the time, when you're dropped in for a managerial change in the season, firstly, it's because the manager's failing, or the club's failing, or the program's failing, whatever it is, and you've got a turnaround. But here, obviously, Nathan and his staff have gone gone up to the up to the Premier League, and you know, congratulations and good luck to them. But we come in, you know, like you said, with a with a little bit of time, which is which is crucial. You know, the the game model. Uh, Rob wants to put in place you know it'll give us time to work it'll give us time to know the players and you know get them uh, allow them to know us as well as as well as our relationships with the staff and I always think you know those relationships and the people and you know that 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 uh, that helps with the success but obviously on the tactical side of things it certainly gives us a chance to to implement what we want to what we want to do and what's that transition like for the players? As you say, the, the ones that have left, the coaches and the manager, have left because they've done such a good job. But for the players now, you know, having had success, a new coaching mob come in, how is that for the players, do you feel? I'm not sure we're a mob, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, listen, I mean, it, it's, it's football, you know. Uh, I, think, I think players are... You know, you have had a, a set of program here, but players, you know, are in the end. They, you know, they, they do it for themselves and they do it for their families. Things change, circumstances change. They change clubs, managers change. So most players are very, very resilient. Get on with things, and you know, they'll. I'm sure they'll they'll enjoy. Hopefully, you know, working with us, and and uh, and we'll enjoy working with them. And you know, like I said, the, the main thing is that you know we we're respectful of where the club is and what the club is historically and in recent history but also you know try and put our own our own uh, identity on it and our own program and and like I said be successful with it but just a final one from me um, and again this could be for anyone really uh, because of this break and because it's unique um, what, how is it as a as a coach and maybe you, you need to speak to the the guys who work with the numbers and things like that but how much you want to build up the players when you resume because this is a one-off so it was a bit like covid managers weren't sure or we're going to rob it (laughs) managers weren't weren't sure 
how much to push the players in training with three weeks off, four weeks off. And you've you kind of got to get it right, but no one kind of knows what that right is. I think the lads, have, they've had some time off, but they've also been doing work while they've been away from here, Jeff, as well. So they've, uh, they've been in constant contact with the, with the S&C staff and the, um, they've been able to feed back on their load, their GPS stuff. So it, it, we've, we've been able to monitor it. You know, the guys the guy have been able to monitor what they've done while they've been away as well. But it's been important for them to have a breather and have a rest as well because the, you know, the game, as you, all, as you know, it's been really intense. So they've had a little bit of time off, but also they've been able to keep fit. And I think like, if you ask most players these days now, no one really has more than a couple of days off because they just, they just, they just do, they keep fit now. They just, they're, they're different to what people and players were 20 years ago and, and, and beyond. So um, they're in a good nick. They were in good nick out there in training today. Um, but look, we'll, well, obviously we've got to work with the players. We've got to listen to the players. We've got to work with the staff, but we'll, we'll, we'll push now. You know, we can push. We've got to be sensible with it and we've got to, make sure they're in that sweet spot where we're not overcooking them, but they can't be undercooked either. So we've got to make sure when we're going to that Middlesbrough game in a few weeks time that we're ready to, we're ready to run. Um, Cause that's a big strength of our lads, you know, as well as the quality that they've got, they work really, really hard. Um, so we'll be working, we'll be pushing and training. We can, we can, we can do that. They're resilient. And just a quick one for you, Rob, about the two guys. The, the, to your right and to your left um, just a little one on them both I mean obviously you know Richie very well and then you've got Paul there with, with a lot of experience how do you see that balance? I think it's a, I think it's great I mean I'm really excited to work with both of them and I think you know I know Paul is a little bit older and he has got great experience but you know Richie's been coaching for 20 years as well now yeah. um, and working with people and at a high level for a long long time so I think with the two people that I've got either side of me, I've got fantastic knowledge uh, and expertise and people that I'm really going to be able to lean on, people that I'm going to need um, and, and, and people that the players can really lean on and they're going to need as well. When we, uh, when we sat and spoke to the lads earlier on today and we had our first meeting with the players and you know, I said that the, these guys, are, they're coaches and they're great people, they're, they're great with people, so they're going to give the players a lot of time. Um, so our main aim is obviously to improve the group as a whole and try and win football matches, but also within doing that, and while you're doing that, you want to improve individuals, help them. My job is to try and help them become better people and, and, and better players and I'm going to need these two alongside me massively to help with that because they're, uh, they're very talented coaches. Uh, and do, how did that meeting go? Because you often speak to, or we often speak to players and, and managers, that first meeting you have as a manager with a new set of players can be a bit daunting and you just want to get the right message across. How did it go? Yeah, I mean, it's probably better to ask other people that when you get a chance to speak to the lads, but I feel it went well. I mean, I feel that we got a good response from the lads. They were all... Um, sitting there very attentively it was important not to speak for too long you don't want to lose anyone but we tried to keep the message simple tried to come across with some humility because we recognize how well they've done um, but also we're in a position now where there is going to be new voices and 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 we're going to want to we're going to want to at some stage put our stamp on it as well whilst recognizing the things that the lads do really really well so um yeah it was a good meeting it was good and uh, like i said straight after that onto the grass and and, and that was uh, that was excellent as well so it's been a really positive first day and is that the coaching setup done now rob what is it i mean are kevin the two kevin's still going to stay there what, is that, yeah, as, yeah as, as far as i'm concerned there uh, we're, we're 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 done and um we're uh, we're in a great place nice up thanks cheers rob thank cheers, you guys. jeff cheers I mean, how has it been? Obviously, you came out of Watford um, earlier than you would have liked. So, has, has it been um, strange to have a sort of mid-season uh, or early season break for you? Yeah, I mean, it was it was surreal. I'll be honest. Like being at home for five weeks, uh, um, I think my wife couldn't wait to get me out of the house. If I'm being honest, but um, because I, I've always worked, I've always coached, and it, you know, it was a unique situation for myself. Uh, but at the same time, it was a it was a great opportunity for me to reflect, um, look at ways of how me we can get better, um, you know, and look at all the stuff that we've done previously. And um, so it was actually after the first couple of weeks I started getting the hunger back and thinking, right, you know, I want to keep improving. Wanna, how can we do things differently? Uh, and and obviously, I got out to watch a lot of championship games. I've, I've definitely covered a lot of games over the past few weeks, so it's been. 
good bad in a way. Did you did you watch Luton much in those uh, in, in that break as well? I've watched a live game and then I've watched a hell of a lot um, on the laptop because um, you've got so much access these days to, to watch games. Um, so I've been able to try and gather as much information as possible in a short space of time. Uh, and you know, I've obviously been in, impressed from what I've seen. And the best way to learn is obviously when you're in the building and you get to make contact with the players and, and watch them work. Um, but so far, it's been really positive, and you know, even just spending an hour with them on the grass today epitomise what I've already seen in terms of the work effort, the enthusiasm to, to play football and you know the demands they put on themselves is great. And having such a such a, a short spell there, did that kind of ring the hunger to, to, to come to this job as well? Yeah, it, it always does. You, you know, you get a little bit of a knock in life, you've got to, you've always got to come back stronger and you know myself and I can't speak for Rob but you know personally you've got a fire in your belly, you've got a hunger to try and sort of prove people wrong but you, you know, you've got another opportunity at a, at a good level to, to try and achieve success and, you know, I'm as passionate as, as, as anyone and, you know, I know, I'm, I know we've got a great opportunity here to really build on the good work that's gone on and take it up to, to, to the next level and, you know, I can't wait to get going now and, you know, even just having that couple of hours today with the, with the players makes you even more hungrier to, to get going. And on your own coaching career, you started at Blackpool, I think, and then went to the England age groups. I mean, is it sort of bringing players to you from the academy and, and looking at the answers? Is that a big thing of what you focus on as well? Yeah, I mean, when, once I started my coaching journey, I was um, at Everton and, and Blackburn, and it was, it was about you know developing the youth and, and working with players individually to try and get them better and improve. That, that that's my background, and you know, I was I was unbelievably fortunate enough. Um, at Blackpool when I was doing the under 18s to get moved up to the first team and part of my remit was to was to try and produce players for the first team. That was that was why I was in the position I was in and I had a I had a great time there and obviously the promotion we, we got with Blackpool and then lucky for me I had done three years in England and that was probably the best experience in my career in terms of working with top level players who were you know who were who were in the World Cup now um, you know and travelling the world and you know, learning off some top, top coaches in Gareth and Steve and, you know, Keith Downing and Paul Simpson, you, you know, you, you're learning. So for me, it was like a three-year degree, really. I always look at it as a three-year degree, working with the best players in the world and some of the top coaches. So I was fortunate to, to have that time. And then, but then I was ready to get back into first-team football and, and get back into the, trying to get that three points of a weekend, which is what we're all here to do. I think with England, were you the, uh, an out of possession specialist coach? I mean, it sounds quite like a, a specific role that you had there. Yeah, it was. England did it differently. They, they did it differently. They tried to be innovative. Um, they, they tried to have a, a model where it was a, a head coach in possession, out of possession, which give you a focus on on looking at the different areas of the game, and you know, it definitely give you an insight, and you could go into more detail because you have more time. Um, that, that was the biggest thing with England, you have more time to real get to the nuts and bolts of what it looks like without the ball as a, as a, as a group, individuals as well, and how you can in, improve that and implement a game plan against some of the top nations, so it's something I learned along the way and something I really bought into, uh, and it, it was really helpful for me to develop my own knowledge and understanding. I think I read that, that Rob was the in-possession <laughs> coach as well, so have you got kind of both both kind of areas are sorted. Then going forward to Luton. Yeah, it's funny enough. We were just having a conversation before because at the end of the day, you're coaches. You do all your qualifications to be a, a, the best coach you can possibly be. Now, obviously, you go to different environments and you try. You know, especially in England, Rob was going with the in possession, out of possession. Rob's obviously got a passion for both sides of the game, like I have. And some people like the in more than the out. But at the, at the end of the day, we. You know, the, the years we've been coaching together, it gives you the great experience and the breadth of the whole coaching package, really. But yeah, I think we, you know, if we're both comfortable in either, but we've had that really detailed time of looking into it more and getting into the, the depth of the detail with the in and out. And with Luton, the club that obviously love to bring through players from the academy, and it's a big, a big part of their history. Yeah. Is that an important thing to try and to try and do that as well? If you can? Yeah, but there's nothing better, and, and I know that there's nothing better than seeing a player, you know, come through the youth setup. So if it's a local boy, and, and then they, they play in the pitch, it's the best feeling. Even as a coach, you know, it, it, you get a connection with that because you want to see young players developing, you want to see young players playing at this level and what an opportunity to get at a club like this, I can see it already, there's a good link with the academy which is important and um, 
you know, we want to work with players and make them get better and help them get better. And if that means we've got a, a young player who's good enough and brilliant, you know, Rob's already shown in the past we give players opportunity to to go and to go and perform and go and play. And if you're good enough, you, you'll get that opportunity, I'm sure. And it's exciting. It gives you a, a drive to, to work with young players because they, they they love to be coached. It's the, the new breed. They, they definitely love to be coached, and that's something that we're all passionate about. Lovely, thanks, Richie. No problem. Um, just, just a couple for, for Paul, if I may, as well, if that's okay. Of course, I might. Um, okay. The goal could be okay. Says we're running um, out of time today. Uh, sorry? Sorry, just the, the sign come up just saying we're starting to run out of time, so. Okay, I'll only just ask one on this one. Um, you mentioned obviously about, about you know about Luton sort of rise rise through the years. I think you were um, at Norwich, weren't you? Back in uh, I know it's probably not when you were a member, but in the FA Cup win for Luton at Norwich when Luton were a conference side. Um, so have you have you seen how it's sort of the sort of the rise from the outside has, has come from them back up to the Championship? Appreciate you reminding me about that day. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. <laughs> and uh, a good friend of mine actually was manager at the time, Paul Buckle, who I played with uh, at the start of my career at Torquay, and uh, obviously did a did a really good job here. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, from 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 that league and, and to where it is now, obviously it has been a. a I think that was 2014, 15, maybe, uh, unless I'm mistaken. So that's, I mean, that just indicates the, the the rise of the club over over those years, and you know, it's it's getting back to the level that historically it should be. You know, and obviously we all remember, well, not all remember, but I certainly remember Luton playing in the top level and. You know, like I said before, there's some, you know, some really top top players who have who have been through the football club. Some very good young players, like you say, who have come through the academy and and uh, and progressed through the team and got gone on to big clubs. Um, so we're, we're we're fully aware of the the history of the club and you know the meaning to the the supporters and and uh, and, and, and and really, we, like I said, we you know we want to be successful. We want to write our own page in 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 that history book. And obviously with your experience of, of five years of managing Bristol Rovers, do you see you can add um, add that experience and that sort of help and, and hints as, as especially on the, on the touchline during the game? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it, you know, um, I've been a manager and then sort of stepped away from it to be an assistant with Chris and then I've had a brief spell at Cardiff, had another go um, and then back to assistant. You know, I think... I think you do look at things differently when you've stood on the edge of the technical area with your with your manager's hat on. It does change your perspective, maybe brings a different empathy to certain things that you probably can't understand unless you unless you have managed because it's it's not it's not an easy place, you know, it's not an easy job. So hopefully I can bring some understanding to the role and some empathy, some experience. I'm not that old but you know, I do do hopefully come with a little bit of experience to to help, to help us win under Rob's Rob's game model, you know, and you know, hopefully can 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 provoke a bit of thought, you know, give an opinion at the right time in the right way to, to help us win. Having done both roles and, and plenty of coaching, well, is there a, have you got a preference? Is there done they done everything? Is there is the one that you prefer and, and, and enjoy more? No, I, I've I've enjoyed, you know. All, all parts of my journey, I really have. I, I, I was I was very fortunate to to take over Bristol Rovers at, at 33, you know, with a good group of players, you know, hungry group of players who, who were coachable and you know were full of drive and energy, and you know, I, it, it matched my thoughts on the game and how, how how I wanted to play. And you know, we we had I had a good time there. I did have a good time there. But you know, in 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 football, I was very very fortunate to play at many different levels, and and I've always had the ambition to to coach or play or manage as high as I possibly can and that still remains my my main my main objective that aligned with working with good people so I, 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 I'm a firm believer in the people make make the environment facilities are fantastic and they are important that you try and get the best facilities you can within within the budget you've got but the people make it the people make the football club the football club are the people they are the fans they are the staff they are the tea lady who's been here for 30 years whatever it is and for me it's very much about working with good people with good human beings and I think those those values in the end translate to the players and and you can see that's been here in abundance and like I said we want to obviously try and add to that
just a quick word on, on the World Cup obviously Wales out there um, drawing their opening game um, and Tom Locke here from Luton is out there as well I don't know was he with you at Bristol Rovers coming through there because he was obviously very, very young but I don't know if he, if he was around at that time No Tom Tom was after me but obviously I've, I've, it's, a, it's a club that has been close to my heart and is close to my heart and you know players who come through you keep an eye on obviously with his, with his connection with Wales and how well he's done here and I understand the progress he's made in his own career and obviously he's making he's making here now and I'm sure he's he's, he's enjoying the journey over there um, I'm, I'm obviously hoping that Wales Wales progress through to the group stages but we obviously want Tom back as soon as possible and, and Ethan so we're hoping they do well but not too well I think